Dave, did you ever put in down your stuff? What are you talking about? I saw you put in all that stuff down there in the notables because I was just like reading through and like, I'm like, oh, Nate put in nine things. And then <laughs> down at the bottom, it says, sorry, Philip, I'll narrow this down. I promise. I forgot to narrow it down. I just started watching chess videos. And, well, I, and, I, and I felt bad too because I was looking in there and I was like wow Dave has like at the time four and I was like okay I'll do at least four then because first of all all of these are bangers and I was like well okay I can't I can't just choose one Philip definitely well here's the thing because I was like oh, maybe I'll just be able to pick one on the spot but I don't even remember what they sound like anymore <laughs> like as soon as I started watching chess well, all that worry. shit just left we got you yeah we'll get more into that whenever we get to it but before that Hello and welcome to Gaming Together, a cooperative podcast. I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here with my co-partner, Nave. Each pod, we play through a cooperative experience, and we're letting you, the listener, if this game is a criminal or a cop or something better off playing solo. Nave, I went back and I what? listened to episode one of ours the other day. It's not good. And, dude, I was about to throw up in my mouth <laughs> listening to it. But I'm like, we never changed the intro, even though we're like, we're definitely going to change this intro. But like, we throw up projectile it. directly 180 <laughs> degrees into the air and then back down into so your bad. mouth. But anyways, hey, Nave, how you doing? I'm tired. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, we haven't recorded on a Monday night in a while. Mondays drain me emotionally, spiritually, physically, verbally. Stop me. <laughs> God. <laughs> right, stop. And let's hear some more verbal words from our guest, Jared, from Play Along Pod. Hey, Jared. Hey, guys. What's up? Thanks for having me on again. It's good to be here, as always. Sexually was the one you left, left out, uh, Nave. I was going for it, but Philip always smacks me on the wrist at the end of every episode. Every single time I bring something up like that, oh, we're not family you... friendly, Nave. We gotta get, we gotta get those kids in listening to the pod. <laughs> we're never gonna get a Fortnite sponsorship if you keep this up. That's true. It's Fortnite's great. You gotta get that sponsorship in. <laughs> I still have. Like, I'm look... still just desperately trying to get into the notes. Okay. <laughs> well, while you're trying to get into the notes, we are a weekly gaming podcast. But before we talk about our show, let's talk about Playlong Pod. Just recently, you guys covered a Get Wrecked episode, which is your sideshow. And this is yeah. our, our start of our little sideshow, which mm -hmm. I, we don't even have an official name for it yet. Listening together? I don't know. Missing music? <laughs> music our being, entire podcast music is a sideshow. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to thank you for the acknowledgement, because in your Get Wrecked, you guys talked about Bioshock and you talked about uh, Dead, Space. Dead Space, and yep. there was a hearty segment dedicated to gaming together, talking yep, about just for you guys the joy that is Dead Space Three and how much we loved it. Yeah, watching you guys is just like clips of you guys playing that was. I I want to play it because I want to experience it. I know it it sucked a lot of the DNA away from what the game originally was, but I feel like I have to experience it, even if it's garbage. Yeah, it's the Resident Evil Six of Dead Rising or not Dead Rising Dead Space. Dead I do that Space. every time. Yeah. There's some kind of crazy right. primordial switch that flips whenever you're in a scary situation, but then you see your friend over there that suddenly... <laughs> just like walking around and getting also attacked by necromorphs. You're like, oh, this is a video well, game. No, that's I mean, right. There's some experiences that can be scary. Like if we look at classic Left 4 Dead, when the hunter jumps out, it's kind of funny when you're not the one that gets jumped on, though, and you're just like, oh, no, what are you doing, you goober? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. He's like, yeah, stop getting grabbed. Is it reminds me of scary, though? Uh, it's kind of scary for the person when that gets grabbed. At least I get scared. I'm like, oh, God, no, please, someone help anybody. Just, dear God, help me. It yeah, reminds me when we were playing A Way Out, and I, I got grabbed by that guy in prison, and I was, like, mashing the button to try to not die, and Philip <laughs> just stood there yeah, watching me drinking there. water. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. I love that clip, because it's a good, like, couple minutes of him just standing there watching you, and I can hear, like, you yeah, tapping, just like, mashing save the buttons. me, please. God. Well, I mean, at least in Left 4 Dead, you need your co-op partners to help get to the end. Otherwise, the game That's is true. very hard. That's in true. In A Way Out, there seems to be no penalty for death. So half the time, I just want to see what happens when you die. <laughs> see, that was the pro That's the difference between A Way Out and what is that game that we just recently did? That story-based game? Uh, a Dusk Till Dawn? Legacy of Cain? Oh, I don't Dusk Till Dawn. Yeah. yeah, that Ooh, was it. That, I was dusk and Dawn. That. Till, till Dusk Falls? Uh, as Dusk Falls. Dusk that's Rising? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <dead rice. laughs> but yeah so if someone died then it was just like okay they died and then the game just moves on so but we would constantly be doing That's stupid wild. things and then it just permanently was like okay this guy's an idiot from now on and we're just like ah oh, 
We're like, Drew, take the pills, kid. Take the pills. And then, <laughs> I'm like, know. he's 10 years old. And he's like, I need to do first aid. And he just starts popping all these painkillers because Nave vetoed everyone and made him take the painkillers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It ended up being and irrelevant. Oh, Dude, okay, that's well. the thing. It's like we got to the end and we're like, this game sucks. The narrative's bad. And then I look around everywhere else and everyone's like, this game fucking rocks. It's the fucking best. Did you know this part? And I'm like, oh, no, my phone's going off. I was like, How, what is the shit that everyone's talking about that we never experienced because we decided to crash our bike into the tree that was coming up because we thought it'd be funny? <laughs> we intentionally yeah. fail quick time events. Yeah, I saw so many, so many people talking about this game and giving it like a bunch of accolades and good reviews and everything like that, too. It's like, oh, this looks interesting. Well, it did not We're receive an accolade contrarian. from Gaming Together. We're just <laughs> it contrarians. The, it did not get the Gaming Together stamp of approval. All right, so I mean, we, we are had a, fun. Yeah, we had fun. Damn it, Dave, we need to move this on. We I know. To talk about Dusk Falls again. <laughs> so games we've been playing. Dave, if you want to talk, what have you been playing? Well, do you want to tell everyone at the top what this episode's going to be? You mentioned it briefly. Oh, yeah, okay. This is going to be a different uh, episode. If this is your first episode, go back episode. and listen to our, our, our way out. There we go, because that has Jared on it. Let's go back hey, and listen to that, that one. It was a great time. Go listen to yeah. it. But if you want something new, this is going to be a pilot episode of our side series, yet to be named, listening together or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll come it, up with Insert something. name here. <laughs> yeah, insert name here. Work in progress. Covering video game soundtracks and OSTs. So we will get to that in the meet. Until then, we're just going to do our regular weekly intro. Nave, what have you been playing? I've been uh, weaving it up. Uh, Hell I, yeah. I've been playing Judgment, the Yakuza spinoff, which is uh, amazing. I don't even need to... Philip has learned the light of Yakuza. He's been playing through Zero. I don't know how much he's gotten... How far have you gotten okay. into Zero? Big spoilers for Yakuza Zero real quick. Do you care, Jared? No, go for it. Spoil away. Okay, I just got to the part where um, a real estate mogul Tena Kanaka dude got shirtless and died, and I held him in my arms. and then That's a good part. His, his sister showed up and like that one actually kind of tugged my heart heart strings at that point. And Jan was there too. And we were just like watching as this all went down. The acting is so good, isn't it? Yeah. Like like, that's such a long cutscene too. That was like, I'm like, Hey, I'm just going to pop in and play like, you know, like two brawls or whatever. I did like one brawl and then watched a 15 minute cutscene. I'm like, (laughs) this is nice. And I'm like, where's Majima? And then like instantly it's like end of chapter, next chapter, last time on Majima storyline. I'm like, here we go. Like, let's see where this is going. You could have told me any random thing about this game, and I would have believed you because they're so batshit crazy. You'd be like, yeah, the banana stabbed the, the tall man, and I cried. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something that would have happened in this <laughs> game. Banana Whoa, corrupted. Jared, you've played Yakuza 5? Oh, my God. See? I, I knew it. I knew it. It was there. I need to play these games, though, because I've never played oh. any of them at all, ever. Right, right before we uh, encounter dead, um, I don't remember his name, Taka Mamata or whatever, everyone has a crazy name. Uh, well, you're have, obfuscating the spoiler now at this point it doesn't even matter <laughs> if you haven't played the game but uh you get jumped by the dojima clan again and nishki's there and i'm like oh, nishki you've returned and he's like my boy Brother. he's like there's no point in me climbing through the ranks of the dojima if you're not by my side and then he takes <laughs> his shirt off and then i take my shirt off and as kira and i'm like let's hell? go we have like a, like it's it's a prequel so we have our unfinished um i think there's a word for it what are the back tattoos called you know, Nave? Uh, I don't know. There's I think a name they had like a traditional name for the back tattoos, but they're like unfinished. And then we just go to fight. And then we bust into a room that has uh, the real estate dude and Kuze is standing right there. And I'm like, Kuze! And Jan is like watching next to me. And then instantly Kiru, t- like, like first Kuze goes like, Kiru! And then Kiru turns around and is like, Kuze! And I'm like, yes, perfect! Like This is exactly what I wanted to happen. Incredible. I, I stole what you were playing. Oh, this is what I was playing. This is what I. <laughs> well, I brought. I told you to talk about it because you didn't even write it down. So I was hoping you'd start. Oh uh, yeah. Judgment's a little bit of the same. Uh, the, since you're a detective, there's a whole lot of like question and answering parts. And so you were talking about how all the names are batshit crazy. Dude, Japanese names are hard. And multiple times throughout the game, you'll be asked. You'll be like, uh, it'll be like, ah, oh, who was she talking to? that when and whenever i heard this thing two and a half hours ago and it is like here it's like hero sake sake hero maru sake sake maru and i'm like fuck (laughs) (laughs) i I was like there's hero in the name hero in the name and they all have hero in different spots i'm like fuck (laughs) i don't know god that's rough The game is great, though. I am absolutely loving it. Um, I'm also playing Digimon Survive a little bit. Um, Last week, I talked about how I accidentally bought that game. Did you hear about that story, Jared? 
No, <laughs> tell me. I want to know. Well, long story short, I put it in my cart rather than my wish list, and uh, then and I was also ordering Five Guys on Uber Eats, so I was like <laughs> multitask consuming, consuming, and uh, I accidentally bought way too much video game, and so I was just trying to buy Call to the Lamb, but I have been playing <laughs> Call to the Lamb, and I'm almost done with that one. That game oh, fucking damn. slaps. Have you it played that? It looks amazing. It looks so good. I haven't, I haven't played it yet, but everything I've seen on it, I was like, this looks perfect. This looks, this looks like something I would enjoy. It's adorable. I'm all about the aesthetic. I love the cutesy yeah. kind of demonic looking thing. I, lo- I it's so great and uh, like the juxtaposition between the the art style and what the content that's in it. Right, the con- so, actual content. My favorite part is I would say I would say uh, it, the game is like the Binding of Isaac, and I've already said this like four times on the podcast. So sorry everyone, but the game is like the Binding of Isaac and Don't Starve had a baby, but it's like that baby met Animal Crossing and those two had a baby. <laughs> So it's like, <laughs> it's really cool. And you get to name all of your dudes, even though they only last for a little while. But that's like my favorite part. I absolutely love that part, that in like XCOM and stuff. I love naming people and then seeing what happens to them. Like that kind of spontaneous, yeah. what is it called? Spontaneous gameplay. I uh, saw that the narrative, uh, emergent narrative. Yeah, right? the, the developers had like a full Twitch integration where like Twitch chat can customize the characters that you uh, you bring into your cult and you can name them after Twitch chatters and everything, which is when you're That's sacrificing so them, imagine it's fun. It's yeah. really cool. I was watching uh, Friday Night uh, Friday Night Gamers. I was watching Nick from there. He was playing mm. Cult of the Lamb and I got a little green rabbit named after me or a cat. Actually, yeah. I think it was. Doesn't I don't remember. But um you can like you get to choose on the Twitch app like what you want the character to look That's like and so stuff. So cool. That's awesome. And I he think was more doing... should do that. I don't know why they don't. I, it is really cool. I saw I saw Moist Critical playing like a drug simulator where he, you run a marijuana shop and oh, you yeah. can turn on that so in a stupid. bunch it t- makes twitch viewers <laughs> into customers and it's so stupid oh that's so dumb that's awesome but yeah that stuff is really cool um i've also been playing soul hackers digimon surviving soul hackers i've kind of been dabbling in but most of my time has been in cult of the lamb and judgment and so uh i hardly know anything about digimon survive it's basically just I was gonna a- ask how you're liking it because i i i loved digimon before and the art style and the aesthetic looks super cool so i've been interested in that one I know well, nothing about name Digimon. Name a Digimon, <laughs> Nave. Yeah, like, can you name I one? I know Agumon. That's the one. That's the one that I, yeah. yep, that's the Pikachu. That's the only one I can name too, so don't worry, it's fine. No, there's it's Angelmon, sick. there's Demonmon. If you add like, inanimate object and Monotheon, I guarantee there's a Digimon for it. I was going to, uh, so there's this show I could listen to called Snark Tank, and they were talking about, is there a Digimon you would fuck? And they talked about, oh no, <laughs> there's a Digimon that's just a lady. <laughs> I was like, there's Digimon that are just people. Angelmon yeah. is just a human. But that's the thing. That one, right? But that's the <laughs> thing. They were like, but listen, what if you, what if you got done, and then it just turned into a cat? It's like a bunny <laughs> would cat you, thing afterwards. Would that be, oh. How bad would that be? Yeah. So it's like that's a deal breaker. I don't know. But um, how did we breaker. get here? Oh, Digimon Survive. I don't know what's going on yet. <laughs> um, it is beautiful, though. It looks like you're watching an anime sometimes, yeah, but it, it is really very cool. visual novel if you're into that kind of stuff, which yeah, I am. It's more visual novel than tactics game, because obviously the gameplay is like tactics, but it leans more visual novel yeah. than tactics. Yeah, the gameplay is like Decidua or like uh, mm. Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't know. I've only played one match, and it was the <laughs> tutorial fight. So, And then I went through an hour of, of, of visual, A visual novel. novel. But... um. <laughs> Uh, Soul Hackers 2, Atlas Games published a fucking game on Xbox for on day one. So I was like, round of applause, everybody. It happened. There. They they finally did it. They did the I thing. had to put my money where my mouth was, and I had to buy this video game of which I have barely played any. So it's <laughs> but it is very cool looking, and everyone already knew that. So I'm not saying I'm not adding anything to the conversation. <clears throat> okay. But it plays. It just plays like Sin Megami Tensei, which I mean, everyone knows. So it's like okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty good. Jared, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing a couple of things. For the podcast, we've been going through Chrono Trigger, so playing that for the first time. Uh, it's been interesting. It's an interesting experience. I'm trying to go in as like open-minded as possible because I didn't with Super Mario RPG and got burned by that game because I was like, oh, it's going to be Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door. And I was like, oh, it's not. It's not those things. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's interesting. The combat f- has a lot of like quality of life things that like even I feel like modern JRPGs don't have, which is super cool to see from like an old 90s JRPG. So that's really cool. Uh, time mechanics hey, are. Does are the old one have auto like auto fighting in it? 
Um, it's not auto fighting. It's it's interesting because it's not turn based, but it's kind of like all the characters have a speed stat and all the bar. Yeah, the a- like the action bars. Yeah, yeah, have like bars. the action bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. more like that than a turn based combat, which I like. It's really cool. I like that type of combat better. Um, but it's good. I mean, it, the story plays with time, and anytime you play with time travel, if you're not like really good at telling time travel stories, then you're gonna you're gonna lose it. There's so many plot holes in this in this time travel game that's just like ah. Uh, I don't know. I get, I've tried to play this game multiple times. I have the iPhone version that has like oh, yeah. auto fighting, like it's updated, even more quality yeah. of life, save states, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I get lost in the, like, I feel like I need a guide to play yep, this that's game. That's how I'm playing it. I'm playing with the guide. Okay, good. Because, because I, feel like you have I try to. to brute force it every time because I'm like, this is an old poopy game. Like, this is supposedly <laughs> one of the good ones. I can play this. Yeah. Like, I was able to beat Final Fantasy VII only looking up like three things. Like, I'll be fine, right? Yeah, no, I'm I'm using a guide for the most part. I'm I'm using a guide because I feel like in old games like this, then you're just like you said, you're gonna walk around and being lost. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Or even bosses, like some bosses that have like clear weaknesses or like gimmicks that you'll never know. Oh yeah, because the there's gimmicks. no there's no indication of how the gimmick of this boss works. Like, oh, the skeleton's top half can only get hit by lightning attacks, but its bottom half can only get hit by fire attacks. And you're like, how the fuck am I supposed to know these things? <laughs> no one's telling me these classic old games being old. Yeah. Uh, so it's been interesting. It's been interesting playing that for the first time. Uh, I'm playing, as Nave put, Poop Assassin's Creed Origins here that he, <laughs> I left it in there. I left it in there. Um, yeah, the only Assassin's Creed, I haven't played anything past Black Flag. Uh, Black Flag was like the last Assassin's Creed I played and I didn't play a ton of it. Um, I'm actually enjoying Origins. I know some of these like newer ones going forward lean less into like the stealth mechanic Assassin's Creed and more into the very RPG kind of things. But I, at least what I've played so far, I haven't played a ton of it. But at least from what I played so far, there's a good mixture of both. There's a good mixture of mm-hmm. kind of the stealth mechanics and the RPG mechanics. Uh, the game is massive. I didn't realize how fucking huge this map is because i like i like what? pulled up the map a big I, ubisoft like, game yeah <laughs> yeah right shocker it's a big ubisoft game with a big old map uh yeah i'm enjoying my time with assassin's creed origin so far um nice. the other game I'm playing i actually haven't i just downloaded this i haven't started playing it but batman arkham asylum uh i got recommended to play this game because i played it a long years ago i played it for like an hour and i was like this game's garbage i don't like it what? i never i never touched it after that are you kidding me yeah exactly you say like all right so it's I was like, I have to give this oh. game a chance because I never, <laughs> yeah, I never actually it gave it a chance. And I love like these kind of, I love like, like Spider-Man, like Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4. It's like, this, like all of that. I was like, this is great. I need to give Batman Arkham Asylum another chance because I don't, I haven't played any of these games before. I think the first one's the best in the series. Would you agree, Nave? I also think the first one's the best in the oh, series. Well, yeah, there you go. Okay. It, it does, a, it does the Bioshock where they got uh, it right in the first okay. go. And then they tried to like chase game trends after that and just got weird. Because I know that Arkham Asylum is is fairly linear, and then like Arkham Knight and some of the older ones are are much more like open world kind of gameplay. I think to it's them. almost more Metrovania. Okay, a little bit in the first one. It, there's well, big linear segments. Yeah, that you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to from the hub because you do but do some it, backtracking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, but I've you, never but played you do the gain Arkham gadgets Asylum. as you go because Batman's literally like Alfred. I need the bat disc locator whatever <laughs> bullshit and then he's like i got you and a drone amazon drone swoops in and lands and drops <laughs> off whatever drone. tool he needs it's just like alfred can you send me all of the tools please no, no. <laughs> just everything give me all just the one tools, at a alfred. time as needed it is uh, i was listening to a show i I, well, I think it was wizard and the bruiser and they were talking about multiverse of madness which i haven't seen but they were talking about like either. some character i've i'm so detached from marvel right now so yeah, it's I've like seen. some witch character is like super powerful, but like she gets stopped by a door. And so she's like de- obliterating <laughs> stuff, but then a door suddenly she can't open. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's that, sounds, that's, that, I don't sounds, know. that sounds like a Marvel thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I still haven't that. seen Endgame yet. So that's how disattached I am from Marvel currently. <laughs> I think that's the last that movie I saw. Nope, I haven't seen She-Hulk either. I haven't seen any of the TV shows either. Good. Mm. <laughs> Good. What did you get? You got a uh, old uh, Fortnite on here. Yeah, I like Fortnite. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and say it, the stamp here. I think it's a good game. It's a good third person shooter. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I think I play specifically the no build mode because I'm garbage exactly. at building that's things. I think that's the only way to actually play this and enjoy it if you're not just like wanting to be sweaty and build and everything like that. But I don't know. I think that out of a lot of these battle royale and games that have like a battle pass, 
like the Fortnite battle pass has felt the least kind of intrusive and offensive than all these other ones. Like I have put in, I think the battle pass is like seven ninety nine. You could play to get it. And then as long as you play, like as long as you play the game and go through the tiers, you'll get enough like V bucks to buy the next battle pass. Like I've only played, I've only paid once that seven ninety nine price and I've gone through a couple seasons and I haven't had to pay for a battle pass since then. And like that's really cool. It's like one time play, and as long as you continuously play, cool. if it's something you're interested in, then uh, you're good. And plus, they just added Dragon Ball Z characters, so I was like, how can I not play as freaking Vegeta and Dude, walk around? Have you, I was gonna say, <laughs> have you used the blast yet? Oh it's, oh, it's so, it's so fun. good. It's, it's so, so overpowered. <laughs> it really. I was is, gonna say so you can unlock dude. that battle pass for free because they're relying on people to pay seventy dollars for their fucking Goku's and Beerus's and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I think they're only like seven bucks for Goku. I don't know I don't what know. I'm talking it's about. It's not, it's not that, that predatory. Like, as I was, there's a league skins that are like 30 bucks for the, <laughs> the Pulse Fire Ezreals and Spear Guard Ooters, right? The Insano hey, ones. The Sona one is really cool. All right. Oh, you know, <laughs> Sona or whatever? Yeah, it changes. It has cool little EDM yeah. music everyone can listen to while you're playing. Oh, okay. And you're hey, like, Epic, oh, this is cool. Continue, if you continue to put anime characters in your Fortnite, I'm you got me. You got me already. I missed the Naruto one, so I was like, I can't, I can't miss Dragon Ball Z. I when is Anya that. from Spy Family gonna be in Fortnite? <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> I feel like that's an easy one to put. You could probably put all the characters in there. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, you got the dad, you got the mom, you got the stuffed animal chimera thing or whatever. Yeah, I was talking shit, but I think I think genuinely the way Fortnite has posi- positioned itself, there's probably a handful of there's only like a handful of people in the world that won't see something on Fortnite that they're like, okay, maybe I want to play that yeah, game. Okay, and that buy looks that. cool. Yeah. That's interesting. There's I'll so many it. pop culture references and anime and movies and TV show where like the, you you're bound to find something that's like, oh, I I know that thing. Maybe I'll try out the game out. Yeah, and it's yeah. Yakuza for me. Ooh, that'd be an interesting one. Just like, all the cast of the Yakuza characters are in there. Maybe not all of them. Just the Every important ones, one. because there's a lot of characters just in <laughs> Zero. I'm already yeah. like, there's too many people. I don't know they're all na- their names. It feels and talking like about characters the... that aren't here yet either. I don't oh know, dude. There's so much, dude. That the reason why you keep saying names and I'm like blanking sometimes is because there's, because so, there's so many characters, many of them. <laughs> it's like Game of Thrones. It's worse. It's longer. <laughs> but um, it feels like the tides are turning for Fortnite. Like I've been listening to a lot of podcasts in our circle, and it seems like a lot of people are done hating Fortnite. Like it, it's yeah. just not in vogue anymore. Like everyone's just kind of okay with it. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel because I still haven't played it. It's not the. It's not Fortnite itself. It's the battle royale. It's a little bit how it looks too. But it's like the yeah. battle royale game mode in general that it kind of puts me off. Yeah. But with Philip playing it because the Dragon Ball Z characters, there's recently a oh, Sacred yeah. Symbols Plus talking about like the actual lore of the game, and I was like, some of this stuff. I'm like getting intrigued more and more to the point where yeah. it's downloaded on my Xbox, and I just look at it every now and yes. then, and I'm like, yes, sure. I made sure that my Epic account was linked, and I'm like, okay, so oh, Philip wants you, me to you've, play. You've taken all the steps now. You got to yeah. step <laughs> off that ledge. There's no more barrier. Like, <laughs> no more barrier left. But can we still do on Warzone? Sure. Okay, thank God. I don't, yeah, I, I don't Warzone. know what's going on. For a long time, there was like a bunch of videos of people hacking, and like they would fly up into the middle of the map and spin in a million miles an hour, shooting everybody. <laughs> I, I, I've seen those clips. It's wild. What's happening with Warzone right now? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard anything. It's been real quiet. All my Warzone friends went to Apex, and that's what they've been playing for yep. months. So, yeah, everybody loves Apex. Speaking of Apex, what I've been playing. Red Dead 2, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> I, was, I was so confused. I was like, what? <laughs> that is the Apex character. This game has Arthur been out for like 10 years now or something, and I finally picked it up because everyone says it was good. And instantly, I've been hitting glitches. So many weird physics glitches and Perfect. like weird fail states with my horse floating off into space. And That's I'm like, part of those games. like instantly, I was like, Nave, this game is so old. What is wrong with it? And he's like, you're an idiot. It's an open world game. They're all like this. And I'm like, yeah. not Fallout New Vegas. That one was good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Have you played I, that game recently, Bob? No, I, I played it because it, it has the yeah, FPS boost. I'll have to check it out. But this game, it, I feel like it's not grabbing me as much as the first one. Because in the first one, I'm like, someone shot my paw and I got to go take care of business at the farm or whatever. I don't even remember what happened in the first game. But <laughs> in this one, it's like, 
I got to go collect some bounties or debts or I got to go move a stagecoach and kill some dogs. Yeah, and my, I'm like, what What am I doing? Yeah, my, my, where's my the hot, personal touch? My hot take here is I, cause I played this a couple years ago for the first, I think in 2020, I played it for the first time and played through the, like the first half and fell off. And I was like, this is bad. This is not a good game. I did not have a good time. And I was like, you know what? I got to finish it. So I jumped into it and played the, the second half of it. And I was like, this is incredible. The last like oh, half no. of that game, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. But like the first half, it just feels like you're saying it just feels so slow. Like getting up, it feels like you're not doing anything important. But like I, I guess said, I'll change my facial hair for the third time in three days as <laughs> I'm just like going to the camp again. <laughs> what they're doing is they're establishing... Your environment, yeah. oh god, the lore of the land, the world, the world characters. Uh, you know what, what kind of game doesn't need world building or characters or establishing any norms? Tetris. Final Fantasy Thirteen. Oh, well, Tetris too. <laughs> I, well, I mean, there's rules in Tetris. <laughs> but I, Nave, I did it. I finished Final Fantasy Thirteen, the first one. Oh Took me gosh, fifty-five did hours. I did it after all this time for years on the podcast. I've been talking about Final Fantasy Thirteen, but I did it. I can finally say goodbye to snow, goodbye lightning. See you later, Zaz and your little chicken. Did, did you like it? Okay. I went on such a weird curve with this game, too. Like, it went Power Wash Simulator on me, where I was super into it in the beginning. The first half, they had me. Second, The second half, they lost me so hard that I was so <laughs> determined so I could report back to the pod that I was a good boy and I finished my games, that I stuck <laughs> with it, hit a just difficulty wall where, like, you need to go grind because you've just been, you know, brute forcing your way through stuff. And I'm like, yep. whew. So I grinded for like a, one hour a day for like a month until I was able to go back Jesus. and clear through. But I got to say, I teared up at the end. Like spoilers oh, for Final Fantasy 13. When you see your sister and you see your son and they're like, you know, I love you. I missed you so much. You know, whatever. I'm like, they missed him so much. <laughs> I guess. So, and then like, oh God. And then I don't understand what happened in the ending either. So I'm like, I don't really know what happened. Final Fantasy game. Yeah, so I'm going to go straight into Final Fantasy 13 2. I just thought we do Final Fantasy 13 2. I don't know what the goddamn is going on in that game either. <laughs> because it's like, here's what you missed. And they basically give you a text dump from the first game divided into like a 13 chapter light novel. And I'm like, I'm not reading this. I'm not going to catch up on what I just played. It's but wild. then I started and I'm like playing through. So I'm like, who are these characters? Why is lightning like a soldier? What happened to the giant crystal city that was made of the two giant golden women? Like what happened? Like where, what changed? And then they're like, we got, we got this guy. We got, um, I don't even remember his name. Leon Kennedy. We'll go, we'll call him Leon Kennedy. He shows up and lightning's like, I saw you, my vision. You came through the gate. We're sending you back to the past, Jack, back to the past, save the future. And, we, and then we send Leon Kennedy back to the past. And then I'm playing as lightning sister with Leon Kennedy. And I'm like, what is happening in this game right now? Nave, did you play 13 too? Can you ex enlighten me with what's going on? Enlightening me. Um, I'm going <laughs> to say that I beat 13 2 okay. and I have fucking and he no, doesn't know I have literally <laughs> zero memory of the game. The only thing I know is that it's all about time travel and dimension jumping. Oh, Good no. Good luck, why? buddy. Good luck. Dude, and, oh, uh, what was the costume thing? The weird, okay, because you start out with Lightning Sister laying in bed just in her normal clothes, and then she Sailor Moon transforms in her sleep, stands up and says, what's with these weird clothes? Goes outside, and everyone's being slaughtered by aliens. I mean, that sounds like a plus to me. That sounds like a great time. And then Jana yeah. looks over me, and she's like, why do you play these games? <laughs> 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 i don't know 15 i really like 15 the boys in the car that was my jam i don't know what's meanwhile, going on in this one meanwhile i'm playing you i'm playing judgment and i'm flying a drone shaped like a dice that's half dice half cat and, and drone racing for two hours straight just trying to win <laughs> the tournament final fantasy 13 is interesting i played it a long time ago as a kid and i enjoyed like i played like the first half whatever and enjoyed it but never finished it and i've been like wanting to go back and play it but it's so long where i'm like ah. I don't know if I can do that. Don't do it, Dude, man. It is. I would go look at a synopsis. Um, there, the only thing that I got out of Final Fantasy XIII, the original one, is that um, the that Saz and his son. That is like it's impeccable. I love that fucking story yeah. arc. I love that character. Yeah, yeah. I love all of those characters. I love great. that family. Um, everyone else just fucking sucks, and I couldn't. And well, every it's, it got to the point towards the end of the game where I was legit just skipping cutscenes, like or like just doing something else, playing Animal Crossing on the Wii wow. and stuff. <laughs> Trying to, while doing it. That's well, funny. that is the best story because it's like every other character is just terrible. It's like Snow, he's like, I'm going to marry your sister. And Lightning's like, 
I'm one bad dude and you don't want to marry my sister or something. I don't know. It was really <laughs> weird. And then it's like, then you have Dodge and Zaz and Vanil, where it's like, Vanille has been traveling with Zaz this whole time. And he's like, you know, best friends pretty much like uh, Zaz is the oldest character. He's like the father figure of the group at this point. And Lightning is the other father figure. And like Zaz goes through all this effort to take care of Vanille and Hope, the kids. And Vanille's like, by the way, I was the one that turned your son over to the police pretty much and got him turned into a crystal monster. And then at that point, Zaz, God, like major spoilers like at that point zaz contemplates suicide or like it was so it was so heavy out of this game that wow. was just so goofy in a theme park in a theme park level this happens <laughs> and i'm like god i i don't know what's how to feel i got so many feelings <laughs> i can't stop I playing for some reason i have so many feelings i need to know yeah but nave i could brag i am 10 percent through my backlog at this point i just hit 10 percent by completing final fantasy 13 how do you know how are you keeping track you have a Google I have Doc a Google Doc. I have a big Google Doc. I'll send it to you later. I have a uh, keep talking. I have a thing that I, I can look at true achievements. Let me do see. You, do you just have like a like a list? Are games not constantly being added to your backlog as they like? Dude, they are. Your- I oh, am okay. at a negative growth rate at this <laughs> okay. point, where I'm getting I'm gaining more games from Games for Gold, from the yep. free Epic Store games, from just like any games that I buy or my family gives me. I just add it to the list. Just another chunk on the Google Doc of going like, I'll play you one day. And then Maybe I go I'll and I play, yeah. I play something else. I don't know. It's just sad. And then I look at Earth Defense Force 2017 and I'm like, <laughs> maybe I'll finish you now that I've had you for seven years. It's funny. When we played uh, Martha is Dead for the podcast, uh, Kai had bought it on PlayStation, like full price or whatever. And then I was going through my Xbox catalog and I was like, oh, hey, Kai, I, I own this game on Xbox because I got it with oh, gold no. or something, but I never had to, I didn't go through like my backlog of games and I was like, I yeah. actually own this game. <laughs> I, yeah, I, like, I totally forgot. I have my I log all like sorted by like digital, sorted by yeah. system, uh, environment, like what store it's from because I have games on Steam, I have games on Epic, I have games on Origin, yeah. I have games on every other franchise out there. Yeah, I don't even look at Steam anymore. I've, I think I have like 800 games on Steam. I have like oh, no. 1,400 oh, on Xbox. I think I have like 200 Jesus. on the PlayStation. I'm glad my Switch was taken from me because God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. So I, I, when I look on True Achievements, I, I see I have 40 of every achievement I could possibly get on my account, of which I have 1,358 games on my account, <laughs> uh, according to this. So that I just that I've started because it only tracks games that I've started and gotten at least started. one achievement in. Oh my so God, I am at forty three point eight eight percent. In order to get that one point, uh, that point one two percent to get to forty four, I have to do fifty nine achievements. Point one two percent. That's the situation I'm in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll never dig my way out of this. I can't. Uh, maybe, I can't look at it. I can't look uh, at it. On on Speaking your deathbed, of... trying to like finish game <laughs> achievements, trying to find the quickest ones possible you can get in. Yeah. What have you added to that list recently? What did Nave buy this week? Uh, so I haven't really. I've been a good boy. I haven't really been. Sp- besides all of that money I spent already. Um, <laughs> so I did. I did mention I bought Soul Hackers two already. Um, I bought that with uh, rewards point money though. So I'm still yeah. saving up my saving up that money. I also bought a game called Milky Way Prince: The Vampire Star. Please explain which, this to me because when I read this, I was like, okay, I need to know more about this. <laughs> It just sounds like a Rush song had a baby with a My Chemical <laughs> Romance song. But um, it just looks like some hipster visual novel thing. And I love hipster visual novels, honestly. I love indie games. And so I just want to check and see what this hell, what the hell this thing is. I think it was new. It was on sale, but I think it was like a uh, just released sale. You know what I mean? Like a 10% yeah. off for the first week or whatever. So mm. Or maybe it was just on sale. I don't know. But um, I picked it up. And it's just one more visual novel to throw onto the pile of visual novels for when I get COVID again, probably. And I can't you want to read a thumbs. thousand words. Yeah, I last time I had COVID, thumb. I just watched probably a hundred hours of Moist Critical just playing games, just VODs. Just <laughs> living know, vicariously was... through him. Yeah, it was sad. I'm going to try right. and knock some stuff out first. And then this moves us right into our Patreon segment. Thank you, patrons. Michael Superbacker and Pinecone, through your support, we were able to do this new sideshow. Nave, I noticed that you did the Twitter. 
but I also did the Twitter whenever we were ha- going to use a different topic. Yeah, so you I jumped shrunk- the fucking gun. <laughs> hey, okay. I mean, everything you seemed jumped okay. You gun, and now there are oh, people expecting to hear not OST record related things. We got to get <laughs> well, serious no, before the Pokemon can, episode you asked. We'll save those ones. Time to get serious. What? No, we got to write them now. This is the time. No, no. Uh, we'll save them and read them later. Whatever we do oh, that, that themed episode. The toxicity one. <laughs> Everyone that wrote in for the toxicity rain check will read your stuff later. <laughs> this is his decision, not mine. I think I think we should honor the the write-ins. Mm. All right, how about this? We'll read their names: List Off Pod, the Elder Trolls Gaming Podcast, uh, Pixel Project Radio, and Friday Night Games Cast, and uh, DJ Stormageddon. Thank you guys for writing in about toxicity. We'll talk about and that. Gen Jukebox. Oh, I didn't see that one. In like three weeks. And King Sozatai. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But now, uh, just a quick little taste. Actually, I think we should go into the meat before we read these. That would make more sense. Yes. Meat. Okay. And the music plays. Boom, 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 boom. You guys need a break? And we're back. Hello and welcome to Listening Together, a spinoff of the hit co-op podcast Gaming Together. I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here joined by my co-op partner, Nave, as we listen back to the OSTs of our gaming experiences. Hey, Nave. Did you read that? Yeah, I or wrote that. Or just rattled that off? Okay. No, I saw that. You, no. you, you should have just like said you like came, that was off the dome. He would have been like, wow, it yeah, was impressive. No, because I'm still not down on that title. Okay, so listeners at home, the whole point of this is to take a closer look at our gaming media, specifically the soundtracks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's I'm still subscribed to Game Informer because there's, it's like a penny with my game pro gamer thing at GameStop. Every time I buy a game, they're like, hey, for a penny more, you can get Game Informer and we can just throw this in a landfill. And I'm like, yeah, send it. <laughs> and so then I'll read it and they'll be like, the stunning soundtrack of Sonic Frontiers 3D just blew my mind. And I'm like, it's not giving me nothing. Like, I what in the written media, I can't really enjoy this experience. So if you're really going to like review gaming media that is audio i feel like yeah. this is the perfect place for it yeah uh, listen to it i like to imagine that if they had a version a uh, different tier you can pay for the game informer where they open up and like one of those like cards that play birthday music would just like play the soundtrack of like a game that as would you open not it up. be a bad idea <laughs> they need to invest in technology like scratch and sniff but st- yeah, scratch exactly. and audio yeah yeah just scratch it and it plays the music <laughs> <Yeah. on first laughs> <years. laughs> in the, the xbox official magazine they would send the demo disc out like, do you guys That's remember true. those? Yeah. Just say, yeah, uh, send I a cassette remember. tape with Sonic Frontiers uh, soundtrack on it. You just unlocked a memory. Work. There was like one with Silent Hill for the room on it. And I remember I would just chill in that fucking, I was a weird kid. I would be in that room and I'd be like, I fucking love this place. And then I'd go through the hole where the combat was. And I was like, this combat blows. I'm going back to the apartment. And I would just walk around the apartment for like 20 yeah. minutes and be like, this game is cool. And then, I don't know. Oh man, demo discs were great. All right, so... In this, we have each went along and chosen one notable song that is our best song, a song that is like a signature staple or just overall notable, and the trash song, the worst song. And this week, we are covering Gen 1 of Pokemon. That's yellow, Hell red, yeah. blue, and green. What? So those are green? the games we're giving. Yeah, that was the, green was the, the, Japan the one. third one. Oh, how, how could I forget the one that didn't release near me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, I'm, man. Come Jesus. on. We are a uh, globalized society at this point like globalization so nave sent out a tweet i don't remember what he said in the tweet but people What's wrote the best in song <laughs> oh, <laughs> tell you about the best song just that. Right. so tales of the backlog they replied in gym leader battle which did anyone else cover that one certified banger yeah that was in my notables okay good we'll we'll, we'll cover that one when we get to yeah. and lavender town theme which is also a bit of a banger did anyone want to put that in their notes no um Honestly, I thought that was going to be my favorite, but once I did another listen through, I was like, there's a couple of these that are like, like actually really good right. without the nostalgia context. I think Lavender Town is like the popular nostalgic one, but like you said, once you start listening to these again, you're like, okay, ho- hold on, hold on. Some of these right. other ones are bangers. So let's take a quick little listen to Lavender Town and just see if, we'd, uh, if it holds up. I think the best part about this song is the abrupt change in tone. 
that I, I, it yeah. has compared to everything else. I think that's why it's so notable oh, to everybody. I was looking forward, and I know, Nave, in your thing, you talked about, did you write the Pokemon Tower in there? But that one, like, grows on this theme to, like, yeah. another kind of, like, spooky tone. That one I listened to for quite a bit whenever I was, like, trying to figure out which ones I wanted. Yeah. But like Nave was saying, like, out of all of the songs, as you're going down the list and listening to them, they're all, like, upbeat and happy and exciting and adventure. And then you get to this one, tone's completely different compared to, like, the rest of the soundtrack of this game. Just for listeners at home, if you haven't played it, this is the one that has the Pokemon graveyard in it, in case you needed death in your kid's and Marowak. game. And Marowak. Yeah, and Marowak. Sad Marowak. So, thanks for writing in Starter Quest Pod and Tales from the Backlog. So, Gen 1... The composer of all these fine works was Junichi Masuda. And this guy was actually really figure. interesting. He did a lot of the Pokemon games, not as just a composer. He does a lot of game development along, on the side too and directing. He did like most of the Pokemon composer work as either as like lead composer or like a supporter. Hmm. And he also did like the Yoshi songs. So this guy is a, around Nintendo. And I'm glad we got Jared on for this one because he is the trademark Nintendo boy of Play Along. Certified Pokemon. Our entire Pokemon episode was stolen from them playing a Nuzlocke, so we decided to do it ourselves. <laughs> hey, I'm down for it. More Nuzlocke's the better, honestly. I really wanted to do another one, but we literally just did a Nuzlocke for the podcast. I, I can't justify that again. <laughs> They're so brutal. And uh, Masuda, he, when I was doing all my research, one quote I found from him was that his goal for all of like the Gen 1 Pokemon song when they asked about him is like every song needed to be easily hummable or something that you could just like move right along with and it was just a simpler song compared to i don't know like aggressive techno i'm not sure what <laughs> he was comparing it to but these songs are very catchy it he was so hard to make this was. it was interesting because whenever we were looking uh, whenever i was flipping through trying to find the worst song like in my opinion which i don't think there really is too many yeah. bad ones the ones that were immediately jumping out to me were the ones that were kind of garbled messes, like really yeah. fast ones yeah. that, and I'm yeah. like, I don't, and, but usually they would just, that would just be like the intro to a battle. And then yeah. as the battle started, the song evens out and it's good again. And I'm like, okay, well makes sense. Yeah. It was really hard picking it worst in this, uh, these, this soundtrack. So these games are definitely, or these songs are very nostalgic for us. And I remember listening to them on my Game Boy and probably annoying my parents endlessly as I would crank up that little rough dial as high as it would go just so I could listen to my little beeps and boops. I remember so, I used to have, uh, the Game Boy had a headphone plug-in, so I would have I like just about really uncomfortable that. headphones that I would wear <laughs> and listen to these. Just like jamming in bed to the Lavender Town theme with your big headphones on. Yeah. yeah that's that's a move. That's a mood too. <laughs> So with our three categories, I wanted to start first with notable because these were like the catchy ones to me. And the yeah. one that caught me the most, this is the one that always got me like on our Nuzlocke run on just any time you're playing the game because you just <laughs> you're just walking along and you're jamming. And then you hear the rival appears song, which that's when, you know, your Gary runs up with his smell you laters and his Pokemon that's perfectly <laughs> there to counter yours. And he just tries to whoop the crap out of you. So let's take a quick listen to rival appears. I can just picture him. He always just walks up out of nowhere too, like right around Misty's area. Whenever you're in like that that place heading up north, I don't remember which route that was, or when you're going up to the left to like the Indigo Plateau for the first yeah. time, it jumps you there. This that's this where song, our first Nuzlocke got ended. I was like, me. this song immediately gives me like anxiety because thinking of like playing Nuzlocks and running into him when I'm not prepared, I'm like, uh, okay, sure. Here we go. Have, yeah, exactly. This is the end runner right here, if possible. Nave, once again, so <laughs> many songs on there. Yeah, I have a problem. It was hard. I'll, I'll give it to you. It's hard to choose. So I also have more than one on here. So, well, what my plan originally like, was was just to put anything down that just made me think. Because I was editing as I was flipping. I was playing. I was playing uh, Cult of the Lamb and just listening to the soundtrack. And, and something jumped out at me. I'd put it down on the notable. And yeah, then yeah. by the time I got to the end, I was sitting there scratching my head like i don't know which one i want out of all of these i barely remember what they sounded like and as i would flip through them again i would be like I'm like oh definitely cycling and then i go back and i'm like oh man cerulean stays really good and then i go to indigo plateau and i'm like shit 
That's really good. But since <laughs> yeah. since you brought up Gary and meeting him on the first time going to the Indigo Plateau, that's the one I'm going to pick. It is the first one that I put down anyways. So Indigo Plateau. Uh, I'm not seeing that one on the list. Does it have another name? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I was oh, I was listening to the Pokemon Yellow soundtrack, and it just had timestamps for all of them. Oh, God. Why? Like, in the <laughs> description. I don't know. That was what I was listening to. Pokemon Yellow is the one I had. Because that was the one with Pikachu. That was like the I harder version, right? There was, like, a version that, had like, like, the gym leaders oh. were higher level and everything like that, too. It might be, because that, that one came out later. That one was an yeah. updated version. But you could yeah, also yeah. get all of the starters. I want someone to. I feel like I want someone to like rap on top of this or something. Yeah, like, like, like a, so a hard beat, and then like someone just spits some bars on top of this. This one definitely has a big lead up. This is a great like ending area song here. Like you yeah, said, there's a lot of build up to it. A lot of like you beat all eight badges. You're heading towards the elite four. You're going through. You're like you know. Yeah, the the five most powerful battles await you when you're the champ in the making. And this is where all the scariest Pokemon are. That one that one is pretty iconic. Like I remember, whenever I was a wee lad, and I was just like, I I received a used copy of Red that had all the stuff beaten or whatever. So I would just like run around with my overpowered Mewtwo that's level one hundred, <laughs> and I would just like go to different areas, and I'm like, oh, this is the in game zone. This is like scary. Listening to this music play. There is a I lot of tension in that. Yeah, definitely. All right, Jared, what about you? What is your notable song? So I also listed a couple here, but talking about stressful and uh, very kind of hype songs, the gym leader battle, I think that has to be my notable one because it's so good. Play it, play it, DJ Philip. Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> play the drawer. <laughs> Greg, let's go. Misty, your star is about to get fucked right now. You're, you like, don't stand a chance against me. Like, my first thought was, like, battling Misty. Like, this is the move. That's because so that weird. Was, like, <laughs> that was, like, the first, like, wall. Because Brock is always trash. Like, you oh, always yeah. just cling through Brock. Because you usually have, like, knit around with double kick or something. But Misty, that's the, the That's the thing, too. The first time you fight a gym leader, it's like, you don't even know what a gym leader is. And then, right. once Misty's you get like, into this oh, battle, hi. the battle music is just so much more intense than all yeah. of the other battle music. Oh yeah, that's good. Philip, I want to change mine to cycling. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we already played yours though. No, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. So for names, let's go back and take a listen to cycling. I mean, that's a thing. That's a good. That's a good. Okay, song. but cycling was like a second pick for me. That one almost made it on the list. Dude, I remember whenever I was playing the game. I would throw this back. I would just get on my bike and I would just listen to this one though. This was probably like one of my most listened to ones. I'm just vibing. This is not making you want to go on an adventure and like fight creatures. That's exactly what I was gonna say. This just sounds like a kid going on an adventure. Yeah, this exactly. That's what this sounds like. And this is when the game really kind of opens up. Like you're so fast now, now that yeah. you have the bike. Especially because yeah. this is this is pre-running shoes. This is normal walking speed Pokemans. Yeah, the slow ones. Exactly. Oh, good. I saw someone hack Pokemon Yellow and give themselves infinite money. And I guess they just use a Game Shark or something. I don't know. But um, they went to go buy the bike before you're supposed to get it, and it just says, "No, nah, you don't have any f enough money." Oh, that's <laughs> your, your that's infinite money up. isn't enough here. We don't take that currency here. Very okay, sad. so those. Those songs definitely have good sticking points, but now I wanted the best or your favorite song. Oh, and this is a song where like I had to listen to so bad. And I even got my my 10 year old in on it. And she loves Pokemon, too. And I'm like giving her blind trials with the songs. I'm like, listen to song one. Now listen to song two. Which one do you like better? And we're like bouncing back and forth between them. And then after like maybe like two rounds of that, she's like, Dad, these are Pokemon songs. And I'm like, I know they wow. are. Now help me find the right one. Because she plays a lot of <laughs> Let's Go, Pikachu yeah. and Eevee. So she she knows the tracks. She knows yeah. different versions of them because it's like they have like the, the same tracks. Yeah. yeah, but the same song. And she's like, Dad, this is from Pokemon. And I'm like, it is from Pokemon. Good ear, good ear. But I settled on the the opening 
just the basic opening when you start the game. This was going to be mine if you hadn't chosen it because opening's a banger. Dude, it's so good. Now, are we talking about red and uh, blue opening or yellow's opening? Uh, we're talking yellow's about opening red is different. Opening. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about red and blue because I also listened to yellow and it was not hidden for me. A red what? and blue? Dude, so good. yellow's opening is so much better, dude. What? No, okay. Oh, I don't let's know. Let's listen to red and blue and then we'll pull yeah, up yellow for comparison. Both. Red and blue is good. I don't know. If, yeah. All right, see there? Powering up. A lot of build up here. Here we go. I mean, Chill. it's classic. This is what I think of when I think of Pokemon, is this song right here. I think this plays during the opening of Pokemon Stadium as well. Not 100% on I that, but think I think this so might be too. just, this is just the theme. It's like the right, Morrowind theme. Yellow. Oh, you want yellow? All right, give me a second. I'll give you yellow. See, now I already know I'm on the back end, and so there's no way, because it's only nostalgia driving all of us. So now I'm trying to be <laughs> yeah, objective, exactly. and I'm not saying that song is bad. I'm just saying that I think of that, I think I think of the Pokemon Yellow song when I think of Gen 1. Okay, I need to hear all right, that one again. Here's Pokemon yeah. Yellow opening. All right, the, surfing Pi- the surfing Pikachu and everything. Yeah, Pikachu and... surfing. Yeah. Balloon Pikachu. Yeah. yeah. This one's a lot shorter, too. And then it goes into the new, uh, new uh, the older song. See? I, I will admit that this one does give me kind of like a very whimsical, adventurous kind of feel to it, too. And then the yeah, Pikachu. 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 Okay. And then it goes back into it. Yeah. So That's it's literally just kind of like a too. remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can respect it a lot more than I was respecting in the beginning. All right. Moving right along. Nave, you have Vermilion City. What, what made Vermilion City so special? It's a fucking banger. Almost all of the cities are amazing. Almost <laughs> all of the review. routes are amazing. <laughs> yeah, but there's so something many about so good. There's something about Vermilion City whenever I listen to it that just kind of gets it gets right into my solar plexus. I can feel it tightening up. Kind of makes me want to throw up from nostalgia overload. Oh, Ooh, this, this is hitting in the feels immediately. There's good motion in it. Yeah, it's got like two melodies stacked on top of each other. Wait, there's more. And we're back. Yeah, that's nice. Very good. That's a, that's a, a good, good one. That's, that's, good a, that's a good loop. Man, you know, it's so hard to rank these now because, like, we're going exactly. to get to the you trash to them later. Exactly, you listen to them and you're but, like... Oh. But, like, I'm like, maybe I need to rethink my list <laughs> <laughs> after hearing this one again. Dude, because, yeah, because I want to go back to cycling and be like, hey, Philip, run that back and do SSN now. <laughs> I, want, I don't want I was, cycling anymore. I was just going to say that. <laughs> All right, Jared, what did you pick? I picked the ending song because we'll, we'll play it. You guys can hear it. Here, listen, listen to this ending song. Okay. Are you talk- okay, this one. Like credits rolling? Yeah. You I beat think- the game. You're the champion now. And you feel victorious with this playing in the background. Does Pokemon do the thing where it like flies around and shows all the routes you went to at the end? I think it did that in Fire Red, maybe? Yeah, it does. And I know in Emerald, it literally goes through all the Pokemon you've caught, too. Like, it'll show the Pokemon you caught as you're going through the credits. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this one does lighten the heart here. Like I did it. I, beat I remember this. this this playing during our Nuzlocke because it got to a point where we weren't sure if we were gonna win at the end. <laughs> but Jared yeah. was able to hold it out, hold it out for us, and get the win. Yeah, Jared was the reason why we won. He was, I think, he was sacrificed at the end, wasn't he? Yeah, on my side, I, I had to sacrifice him to get get the win. I'm fine with being sacrificed for the greater good. Man, it's just so awful. so good. All right, now let's take it down a peg. Let's talk about maybe the songs that didn't hit so well. And I brought this category out specifically because of my hatred of Mount Moon. Now, I don't know what y'all's experience was as like when you were a glue eating child, but Mount Moon was terrible for me. Like I was, you'd walk in this. All right, hold on. Let me me get the music. When we did our Nuzlocke, Mount Moon was fucking terrible for me too, because I don't remember what legendary it was, but it replaced 
the common enemy in there. I think Zubat or oh, something. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it was, what is the, De Deoxys? Deoxys, yeah. I think oh, it was yeah. a Deoxys every two out of five fights. It was terrible. So you got this kind of like low-key melody playing on loop in the background, just like, you know, and then at the same time, you were constantly encountering these Zubats all the time. And they sound I remember getting lost a lot in this tunnel as a kid, like going into. Oh. Yeah, that's a Zubat. Dang, has the Zubat noise on on tap too, dude. And of course, Zubats just confuse your characters, so then they just hit themselves, and they suck life out of you. So they just make the fight even longer. And if you didn't have something to combat them, it was just painful to play through. And I remember being lost in the cave, having no idea where to go as a dumb kid because I couldn't figure yeah. my way out of a plastic bag. And. <laughs> God, it's just terrible. And I would literally just turn off the volume whenever I get in here. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I feel it. See, you, you're you putting the song, a lot of it was, uh, what is it? Just your negative connotation of hearing the song. I, whenever I was doing this, I immediately put the Pokemon Center song because usually that means <laughs> I died and I had to restart. So when I heard it again, <laughs> I would Center's be upset. So good. But that's the thing. So I, it is a good song. That's why I took it off. But And then it's also kind of the bonfire too like it dark is. souls so it's like uh well it's not so bad because whenever we were doing our nuzlocke we were constantly going back to you know Pokemon not die is, is life is the way this nuzlocke won't end all right nave what did you pick and why i picked the pokemon mansion which i don't even remember and i just didn't think it sounded too good well okay so here's the funny thing so whenever i was listening to it i looked through everything before jared had put his but after philip had put his and um philip put mountain moon now when i was listening through the soundtrack in chronological order i got to a song and i was like mm, this song's the worst one so far by far and then i looked and it was mountain moon <laughs> and so i was like <laughs> so oh. i put mount moon again on the on the notes <laughs> yeah so i put mount moon again and then i switched it to pokemon mansion because that was lame this was my second pick also because this is where we had to like i turned off the audio when we were playing our nuzlocke because the mansion was like our most efficient farming location for XP when we were just trying to grind to finish mm. the game. Plus, and we had the game randomized to where every item that you picked up was a random item, and I got an yeah, EXP share. Way, this was the turning point because I was beaten and defeated at this point. Philip had so many <laughs> legendaries. He had killed all of my legendaries, so I was stuck with, like, fucking rockfish and the worst fucking Pokemon. <laughs> I don't remember. What's, what was rockfish? It was Kai was the name because Kai was oh, upset that I named. No, you were talking about Barboach. Barboach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barboach and Wishcash. Yeah. All right, let's God. take a listen to this one because this. I think even Nave highlighted. He's like, "You muted your audio." And I'm like, "Of course I muted it." Did you hear this? <laughs> and we were playing on the, fast the, forward, so it was just so fast and aggressive. <laughs> the, the the interesting like inconsistent tempo of this is just like weird and it's yeah. oddly like futuristic sounding even though it's like a pokemon mansion well there's a secret lab downstairs right oh, that's like, that was the whole thing but yeah this now, song the, is uncomfortable there's something about this song that i do enjoy on like just uh just like a music theory level Be, mm. like i i love me some prog math metal i love me some crazy metal some of my favorite riffs are just absolutely not in time with the rest of the song but somehow yeah. it works Weird um, keys, but, and just time signatures, and everything. Absolutely, and but this, yeah, there's just something. It's not hidden. <laughs> it's the sounds. It's specifically the sounds. Maybe if the sounds were different, if they were the same notes, just with some other audio hitting my ears. But I feel like if it just had a better bass line to like carry it through or yeah. something, like it's okay to have the the upper upper range, but give it some percussion or something. I don't know. It's so com it's so complex that maybe if you added complexity to the lower end too, it would just become garbled nonsense. By the way, yeah. I have no music training or ability. So <laughs> if anyone's wondering at home what our credentials are for this, Nave's a musician. I have no ability. Here you play guitar, right? Are we talk yeah, about guitar. this. Yeah. I do piano. I, I'm a, I'm a sort of pseudo musician. Yes, it's calling me a musician is really <laughs> generous. <laughs> I can play, play 10 songs. That I, own, I own guitars that I often or uh, rarely pick up. So, I mean, does that count? Yeah, that counts. 
Okay, cool. That's more than most people have. Remember, you've made it farther than 99% of people. <laughs> most people don't even make it this far. Thanks, Philip. It's, it's, it's good to hear. All right, Jared, what did you pick as your trash pick? What is the worst song in your opinion? So it's weird because I think like a lot of the worst songs are just like association songs too. Like you're talking about Mount Moon, it was just like being stuck in Mount Moon. Uh, this one is just called Guidepost, but the song is essentially like every time you run into like an aid or anything like that, and they're they're explaining things to like you. Like a tutorial song. Yeah, and that's where I'm getting this. It's like okay, I think it's because I've played these games so many times when I get to these points, I'm just like sh- slamming A through. I'm like that's fine. I know what run. I know what these things do. I know what Pokeballs are. I just want to go catch yeah. these, some cool creatures. And this song instills that in me when I hear it. Play the track. That dumb bastard next to the eighth gym that won't let you go to Brock's. Exactly. What the hell is that? Oh, yeah. oh god! And this is always the song you plays when they walk <laughs> yeah. away too, and can you're just sitting can you there. It? Can you feel Watching. the anger? Yeah, like it's just—it makes me feel impatient to hear it. I was like, I can feel the patience leaving my body and being like, "Shut the fuck up! I just want to catch Pokemon." <laughs> god. This is the problem with all the modern Pokemon games with any of the side characters that tag along. It's like, hey, look, yeah. it's Wally, and he's going to talk to you about catching Wooper or not Wooper. What's the, what's Ross. the, yeah, Ralts or something like that. And be like, yeah, I got my top Rattata and the one I don't care, you know, <laughs> like Joey, I, like, I don't care. I don't care about you, Wally. I don't care about you, Wally. You can catch whatever you want. You're not part of my journey. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in my story. You're not in not my, my story. <laughs> not my rival. Hashtag not my rival. So. Just to in cap, Gen 1 has some incredible songs. We only brushed yeah. a couple of them. There's so many more. Like this pick, like, like we've been working on this pod for a while. And then we were like, oh, what, what soundtrack are we talking about? And I'm like, let's do something simple for our first go. Let's do Pokemon Gen 1. And Dave's like, oh, you know, okay, cool, cool. But I didn't realize how hard it would be to slim down the Gen yeah. 1 picks. There's They're really so hard, many yeah. bangers. DJ, play Route 3. You want well, Route, route 3? 4? Route 4 is a good one, too. That's one I really like. All right, we'll start with Route 3. Oh, is Route that's 3? Not it. No, that's not it. <laughs> I remember that sound. Oh, classic route 3. One. Classic Route 3. <laughs> All right, I don't see Route 3, but here's Route 4. This is Route 3, too. Okay, oh, cool. They share the, a theme. Oh, so good. Yeah, on the YouTube video I watched, it was like Route 3 through 10 and Route 16 through... And <laughs> yeah. so I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just put Route 3. But then the end here, it's like... Ah. Uh, it's heroic. Yeah. So, these songs really are incredible. Uh, I recommend going out and playing the Gen 1 games or just listen to the soundtrack. I found like three different playlists, all different with different names. It was really unfortunate out there on YouTube. <laughs> you can go through and just listen to all the songs and go check out some of the artists that are doing like lo-fi remixes. Like oh, the Pokemon lo-fi, lo-fi really remixes yeah. are like pretty much my my number two go-to to listen to when I'm not listening to the same thing I listened to high school, which is My Chemical Romance and The Killers. Oh, hell so, yeah. I love My Chemical Romance. Yeah, go check that out. Nave, what other games would you like to see us cover their OST as of? Mm, Hotline Miami. Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's official Sonic Frontiers. I mean, there's just so many good ones like Hades and like Final Fantasy VII. Apparently that has some bangers. I Hades remember, has like, music? Hades? Yes. I've never played it's written Hades. by the same dude that did Bastion. Well, yeah, like it's Bastion. the same company. And I liked, uh, what's the other one? Bastion and uh, Transistor. Transistor was good. Didn't play that I can't one. think of music from Bastion either off the top of my head all like off the rip all i can think about is the 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 narrator i only, <laughs> the only thing i can hear music in my head I can't let's see there's the name. baker's bro uh, like bow there's um there's just those two uh ones that have actual words that like zia and zolf are singing like build that wall and mama i'm coming home you remember those ones at all are those real songs <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> i set my sail something would, the wind will take that that me back to my home you know, they're so good or well, of course, I didn't want to break in this too soon, but the Zelda classic Zeldas, like Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Hey, if well, you need to come back to talk about Zelda music, I mean... You did bring up Final Fantasy VII, and of course, that is a fucking absolute banger. I've not, I've never I only remember VII. like two songs. There's like the main menu, and then there's like Aerith's song. Dude, I know every song by heart. Same with Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII. Good? Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, I know absolutely every song by heart. I'm trying to think like, of more soundtracks. 
I, we, we talked about this before, but I'm like, some of the biggest games out there that I looked on the list that have great soundtracks, I only think of one song. And it's like Kingdom Hearts. And I'm like, what's that song that always plays on Kingdom Hearts? Oh, <laughs> simple, simple and clean. Is that it? Simple and clean, that's the way you made me feel. Me. I don't know the oh, words. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those were those were all the correct words. <laughs> <That's beautiful. laughs> Dude, man, Balam Garden and whatever the song is, as soon as you leave Balam Garden before you go to the first town where Zell lives in Final Fantasy VIII. Dude, I want to do Final Fantasy VIII just because you don't know what the songs are, because you're going to listen to them and be like, what the what fuck? Is this? this was on the oh, PlayStation yeah. 1. Super Mario Galaxy. Fantastic. Oh, dude, Galaxy's Down so track. good. Like, what was it, Rusty, Gusty Gardens or whatever? That, oh, I remember yes. that one being like my jam. I don't know about Galaxy, but man, Sunshine and 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 sixty four have amazing soundtracks. Luigi's Mansion, well, just Luigi's name that song. Nintendo song. No, yeah, that's the one song. Wow, no, dude. There's the seven different variations of that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Then you go to the lab and you listen to like a bass funky version of it. Wow, 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 yeah, wow, like. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we talked about Hotline Miami, all the Mario's. Uh, Metroid's got some bangers. Old Super Metroid. Apparently the I don't remember. oh, we talk about some Silent Hill. There's like usually like two or three good songs, oh, and the yeah. rest is just heavy breathing and rusty cans <laughs> being kicked around. <laughs> but those three songs are really good. Katamari Damacy. I'm sure there's at least one. Soul Calibur. Uh, see, so the problem with Soul Calibur, like I'm just going through like a list I wrote before this, but like it's so many just like grand orchestra. Soul it's just like madness listening, like playing in your ears, like most of the Dark Souls battles. Whereas like you have silence and then yeah. a boss fight starts and you're just like, oh great, I'm listening to Minotaur Demon number two and I can't hear a yeah. single thing. So Chrono loud. Trigger's main theme is really good. That's a, that's a that's a bop. Well, I mean, do you have any other recommends, Jared? I'm trying to think of. I'm literally going through a list as as we speak right now, trying to I mean, see. Gold what and Silver game. has even oh, more hits. I remember listening to like the Professor Oak channel or whatever, like on the Pokemon <laughs> Radio. Oh yeah. What about the Metal Gear Solid Five? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played it. Oh, well, that's the only song. I, I, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 5 yet. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I think we pushed this as far as it can go. So, listeners at home, if you like the, our new little show, if you have recommendations or if you want to come in and personally preach the gospel that is, preach. I don't know, Stanley Super Parable. Yoshi World 3, Stanley Parable soundtrack. Oh, yeah. God. Yoshi Story. Just Nintendo. Yoshi game. Story is good. Just have a whole Nintendo section where you just list off Nintendo soundtracks. If you have a, a game you want to share, write in. Message us on where you got an Instagram now. We got Twitter. We got email, it's gaming together pod at gmail.com. Contact us. Which, man, Dave. speaking of all of that contact shit, Philip, when you jumped the gun on that Twitter thing, you got like seven replies. That's I think that's the most we've ever gotten on Twitter because most of the time <laughs> I field replies from all over the place. And so Philip goes behind my back when I'm taking my hangover nap does that thing gets more replies than i normally do then he goes behind my back onto the instagram which is really his thing anyways and then he puts a video just a random video on red dead redemption 2 and it gets like seven thousand views and i'm like what the fuck philip i told everyone that philip was the funny guy but here it is the, now, the real truth know. the truth the is here all right nave what are we playing next week what are we playing salasta i hope to fucking god I know we need to finish that. Uh, this is getting too long at this point. The joke is old. <laughs> Do you know anything about Salasta, Jared? Nope. It sounds like a delicious Italian dish, though. <laughs> You're just not that far off. Just Salasta, some lizards. Fettuccine <laughs> Alfredo. You need lizards. You need a magic crown. Oh, it's Salasta, the crown of the magister. And we found the crown. We did it. We saved the first hour. Salasta. Yeah. Did you win? Is the game over now? No, no, because you got to go around find collecting the Triforce. <laughs> Ooh, I like Triforce. That's, that's a buzzword. I like that. It's literally just Dungeons and Dragons. So if you like making characters, which yeah. I do, I have like thirteen characters. They all have backstories. I, I spend unhealthy amounts of time whenever there's a game that lets me create a character, creating a character. So that sounds that sounds dangerous. And oh, well, here's the problem: you have to create four characters because you need oh, a cool. whole D and D party. So I'll never actually play the game. <laughs> is what I'm. So hearing. if you're sounds playing good. solo, it's a lot of work. <laughs> all right thanks for joining us this week co-op partners actually wait hold on before we go jared thanks for joining us thanks for having me i talk about pokemon is great i'm always i'm always here and always down to talk about video games with you guys excellent excellent so now thanks for joining us co-op partners go listen <laughs> to play along and maybe next week we can all listen to some pokemon music together give us five stars on instagram you fuck six stars actually that's what you should do Deep.
Bye. these guys are great. Bye. No, because what that what you just did was they're gonna give us five and then one, and it's gonna remember the one <laughs> at the end. You're right, exactly. <laughs>